Ever wonder how energy actually gets to your muscles to do exercise and where it all comes from? I often do. Yeah, sure. I, I think it's super interesting. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weenie. I'm Dr. Paul Salasal. Can I please just talk about energy before we get going? Sure. Just to put it all in perspective. Obviously. Okay, two types of energy. <laughs> Kinetic potential. Kinetic energy is mechanical energy. Right. Uh, sound waves, thermal energy, electrical energy, things that are moving. Right. Potential energy, stored energy. Stored okay? energy. That's the stored type energy. That's gravitational potential energy, like holding a ball in the air has some energy in it. Elastic energy, squeeze a spring. How, how Nuclear about, energy. Yes. How about, how about ATP? Well, that <laughs> falls under chemical energy, chemical okay. potential energy, like a battery. That's what we're talking about now. This is the type of energy we're talking about, chemical potential energy, ATP, the Kay. culprit in that one. Okay, so when you're doing exercise, and, and we have some videos about other types of zone training and your max heart rate and all that stuff, it all comes down to ATP. So yes. ATP is the common currency that allows your muscles to contract to perform work. It's the money of energy in your cell. So the first question people would be like, well, why doesn't our body, like if we're evolutionary and mm -hmm. we're like so smart yeah. and such a great yeah. species, why yeah. don't we store a whole bunch of ATP in our body? Hey, well, look at me, I got a bunch of ATP. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's really funny. So the trouble is the ATP molecule is unstable. Like Paul's description and action a second ago makes me unstable. So we actually only have about three seconds worth of activity of ATP in our body because that phosphate bond is so unstable. So a lot of people are like, well, what God. if we had a whole bunch of ATP? Well, it would actually break down essentially prematurely. Yeah. And then when you needed it to go run for the bus or from a bear or whatever, mm -hmm. it's not there. Yeah. So the first source of energy that you have, and I like to use, I was thinking about this, and I thought, how can I get someone who's not into exercise physiology or biochemistry yeah. to understand it? So I thought of it, I thought, okay, what about a money analogy? Everybody loves money. Everybody likes money. So I think of ATP as like the money that you have in your wallet. Okay, that's so, cash on so hand. So especially nowadays too, Usually people don't have a lot of money in no, their wallet because we're not really a cash I society. I use my phone all the time now. <clears throat> right. So you have a little bit of money in your wallet. So what's nice about it is that you have a small amount there, but it's readily available. If you're mm -hmm. like at a flea market where they don't have yep. one of those machines, yep. like, sorry, just take cash, bro. You're like, well, I got nine bucks. Okay. So I'd like one of those like artisanal like raspberry jams or something you like that. That's it. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> right? You get that. Or that footstool. Or the, or the carved out of one piece of wood. Okay. <laughs> Can so, I pay you an ATP? <laughs> so ATP is cash in the wallet. It's good for about three seconds of activity. That's the first one. Second one is creatine phosphate. So we have a video about creatine. Yes, we do. And creatine is a molecule that binds with a phosphate and it can donate a phosphate to help restore the ATP. Because when ATP gives out a phosphate, it's ADP now. So it's looking for a phosphate. Give me a phosphate. Right, so creatine says, oh, hey, guess what? I got some phosphate. Here's your phosphate. So it gives you some, and that gets you through three to 10 seconds worth of activity. So creatine phosphate is the second energy source for those short bursts, but slightly longer than three seconds. And remember, you're converting your potential energy into kinetic energy, be it sound, motion, thermal, that's what your body's doing. So back to the money analogy, I think of creatine phosphate as the bank machine at your bank. That's it. Right, you go in, you can get it, but there's certainly a limit to it. You, yeah. can't, you can't take out all of your money because it has a, yeah, a short like supply. 500 bucks or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's your $500, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. That's the limit. Okay, so the next one is, is glycogen. Right. So glycogen is a molecule, a whole bunch of glucose molecules. That's the way that our body stores glucose. C6, H12O6. So glucose runs through our bloodstream, but glucose can be stored primarily in our liver and in our muscle mm -hmm. as a more readily available energy source. So because you used up that five seconds of ATP, right? Right. Three seconds of ATP. And what I would say is during kind of moderate activity that goes for a prolonged period of time, you're using kind of all of these kind of things at the same time. It's just depending on your intensity and duration, they kind of shift a little bit. Check out our zone two video. Yes. So for glycogen, there's really two ways that glycogen can be used. Glycogen is broken down to glucose and then glucose can either be metabolized with oxygen or without oxygen. Aerobic or anaerobic. Right. So the anaerobic metabolism of glucose gives us two ATPs per molecule. So this is very inefficient. That's the hockey player. He's got like a 30 second shift. That's right. So you're going to you're going to use it quickly. It's not going to give you a ton of ATP, but it's going to get you through the shift, but it's going to create lactate. Right. And this is a, reduce your performance, causes muscle stiffness, all that kind of stuff, but you're gonna have to pay it back. So I think of this kind of like the, the payday loan or the cash checking service. So this gets you money relatively quickly, like say back in the day when banks weren't open all the time, there were bank machines, you got bank money on a Saturday night, but you lose some of the potential energy of that check and you have Fees. to pay it back later. Fees. Okay, next one 
is glucose on an aerobic pathway. The soccer player who has R to fake an injury to get a rest. <laughs> hey, with FIFA coming up, you're throwing shade at the soccer people? Football. Yeah, the hooligans. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't want them singing the song. So glucose through an aerobic pathway can create 30 ATP per molecule. So it's like 15 times more efficient. So oh, when you're going ATP. at a slower rate, and if you had an, an elevated VO2 max, we're going to have a video later on about VO2 max, is your body's ability to take oxygen and use it to break this down into ATP. So this is a much more efficient way. So for me, this is like going into the bank, going to the bank teller, taking money out of your savings account or your checking account. So, so it's there and you can get some out, but it's not everything that you have, but mm -hmm. it comes relatively quickly, not as fast as the bank machine. That leads to the last one. This is fat. a good one. Yeah. It, it is a good one. So what's good about fat? Well, most of us, regardless of how lean you are, we all have a lot of fat. Yeah. We could create a lot of ATP from our fat. But as you can imagine, it takes time for fat to get to ATP, and it's not through the glucose path. There's no way that fat doesn't become glucose. It gets broken down through fatty acid oxidation in a very efficient way, in a useful way to create ATP, but it's very, very slow. You know this because when you've tried to lose weight or you've tried to get rid of some of your body fat, it takes a long time. It doesn't happen overnight. Right, and so if you're requiring this as your main energy substrate for exercise, you'd have to run or bike or whatever at a very, very low level in order to maintain your ability to get all of your energy from fat. So usually we can't even do this unless you're maybe walking. But even running, say, in zone two, a lot of it comes from fat, but still some of it comes from glycogen and other sources. So in your money analogy. Yes, in my money analogy, your fat is kind of like a GIC. Mm -hmm. So the GIC, you have a whole bunch of money there and it really is useful and it's paying a lot of dividends and you're, it's growing, <laughs> hopefully it's not growing, but you kind of want your GIC to grow, you don't want your fat to grow, yeah. but it takes a long time to get it out. You gotta go, you gotta sign a bunch of paperwork and then, so they can get it and it's gonna help you because it's gonna provide you with a large amount of money yes. or ATP, but it happens very slowly. So you have to kind of plan ahead and you have, to, you have to be very careful about the way that you exercise in order to utilize your fat. And that's where your money analogy falls apart. Okay. People want to have more money but they don't, don't want to have more fat. I know, it's, I gotta find something better. Well, okay, what about this? It's pretty good. Like it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I don't think there's a way to get around that though, because no. you, you need the fat yeah. in order to do the exercise, but you don't want the fat if you're yeah. just talking about fat. But yeah, right, so for money. And you, you want you, the money. You want the money. Yeah, so what I'd say is, I hope that helps you understand. All these processes are, are complicated and they're working all at the same time, but it does explain why different intensities or durations of exercise help benefit your fitness in different ways as well as your fat loss. ATP, creatinine, phosphate, glycogen, fat. That's the sort of pathway. Now you know. If you found this useful or if you have another analogy, share it in the comments. If you're interested in exercise, physiology, this kind of stuff, share a comment. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you think is interested in this kind if of stuff. If you could follow what 10% <laughs> of what Dr. Weening says, you get an award. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Hey Brad, do you know how many subscribers we have on YouTube now? One million. That's right. That's why we're wearing these glasses. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not, help us to get to a million and one. Thanks to my brother-in-law, Ben, who made these glasses for us. Oh, no way. Yeah, awesome. on his 3D printer. And if you know where we just stole that script from and the idea to wear these glasses, leave a comment. There's a very common clip you see on YouTube.